Hello friends. If you are new here, my name is Lee. On YouTube, I go by the Snap Chick. I share videos every week on a lot of different things, but I always have a camera in my hand. Subscribe if you haven't already. And it's those cameras that are the topic of today's video. My camera and lens collection has certainly evolved over the years, and I have had quite a bit of churn on those shelves back there in the last year. Today, I will show you our current collection. This collection is purposefully chosen and refined to include things to help me test the never-ending flow of new cameras and lenses that come through here, to document those things, to film myself for these videos, and to have fun, relax, and reset. Because we, Raymond and I, actually love photography. <laughs> and even when we aren't working on this channel, we're still taking pictures. Before we jump into the collection, I want to thank KEH for sponsoring this portion of the video. I am lucky to work with them because they are a company that I use. We use them personally prior to ever working with them professionally. If you are not familiar with KEH, they buy and sell used photography gear. If you are thinking of selling some gear, you can get a free quote online or schedule a virtual appointment with an expert buyer to see how much your gear is worth. I've done both. Both processes are easy, so much quicker and easier than trying to sell the items individually on your own. KEH is also one of the few companies I trust to purchase used gear from because they know how to thoroughly inspect and test gear and they are open and clear about their classifications of used gear on their site. You'll see a lens that we recently purchased from them a little bit later in this video. I am also a KEH affiliate, which means that if you use my links to buy from or sell to KEH, I get a modest commission, and right now you get a 5% discount if you are purchasing used gear and a 5% bonus if you are selling gear. It's a win for you and me if you use those links. So check out the description of this video for them. All right, to our gear. First, our Nikon mirrorless group, the Z7. I use this to film most of my videos, and it is among the best all-around cameras we've used for stills and video. The Z50 is the most compact Z body, letting us use our Z lenses with an APS-C crop for fun and lightweight photography. The 24 to 70 millimeter f 2.8S. It's sharp, good in low light for a zoom because of the constant f 2.8 aperture. You'll see mid-range zooms for almost all of the systems that I talk about today. 14 to 30 millimeter f4s, lightweight ultra wide on our full frame Z body and a great walk around lens on the cropped Z50. The 35 millimeter f1.8s, a super sharp prime for just about anything on either of our Z bodies. The Viltrox 85 millimeter f1.8 is a new addition. I love 85 millimeters for portraits and for filming. In fact, I am filming this video with it, with the exception of this particular shot. Another Viltrox, the 20 millimeter f1.8. This is a manual focus lens, and because it can open up to f1.8, it's a real Z body landscape or astrophotography monster. The 16 to 50 millimeter f3.5 to 6.3 VR. This Z50 kit lens fits the form factor of the Z50 perfectly. It has great optical performance for when size is more important than the perfect sharpness and wider apertures of the Nikon S lenses for the Z bodies. To its great credit, it does also have optical stabilization. I also have a Lens Baby Composer Pro 2 with the Edge 35 optic. I actually also have an F mount Composer Pro 2 as well. I love Lens Baby lenses for the sheer fun of them. Two FTZ adapters. We have F-mount lenses, and the relatively new Z system is not fully built out on lenses, so these allow us to use those F-mount lenses on the Z bodies. Speaking of Nikon F-mount lenses, the 60mm f2.8 is a macro lens that we actually purchased to go along with our ES2 film digitizing adapter set, which helps us quickly and easily digitize our negatives and slides, but we do like to have a macro lens on hand anyway. The 200 to 500 millimeter f5.6 is a beast of a lens that bears the brunt of our wildlife photography with Nikon cameras. We do also have the 80 to 200 millimeter f4 push-pull manual focus lens. Quite frankly, this is just for fun. And another 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8. This is the older non-VR version for f-mount. On to a few primes. 
24F 2.8, 35F2, and this old manual focus 50mm F1.8 Series E. We love primes. And then there are a couple super fun lens baby lenses for when I want to stoke the fires of creativity. The original lens baby and the Soul 45. On to the Nikon DSLRs. We have a D810 that we had converted to full spectrum. If you don't know what that is, I will link to the video where I discuss the conversion in the description of this video. And then the D70 and D50. These are oldies, but goodies. <laughs> They're pretty much on hazard duty for us though. It's for those times when we want a camera with us, but we're not sure how safe the camera will be. So make sure that you have some sort of... And onto the Sony section of the shelves. We have the ZV-1. I use this for in the field vlog style video and documenting my review testing of other cameras. The only interchangeable lens Sony body we have is the venerable Alpha 7 R4. Alongside the Z7, this is one of the most advanced cameras we've used. This is the most advanced camera I've ever held in my hand. For lenses, we have a 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8 G Master a good all-around lens. The Tac Sharp 24mm f1.4 G Master. It's a great compact prime, and it's an absolute wonder for astrophotography. The 200 to 600 millimeter f5.6 to 6.3 is what I use on Sony bodies for wildlife or sporty stuff. Because I love an 85 millimeter prime, the Viltrox 85 millimeter f1.8. Again, I typically use this for video, for portraits, for product shots too. Another Viltrox lens, the 33mm f1.4. This is an APS-C lens, which I use unapologetically on my full frame Alpha 7 R4 in cropped mode, or on any Sony APS-C loaner bodies that come my way. And a couple lens baby lenses, the Velvet 28mm, which opens up to f2.5 and gives me utterly glowing images at those wider apertures and the Spark 2.0 with the Sweet 50 optic. I can actually swap this optic with the Edge 35 that you saw earlier. I heart lens, baby. And now for the Leica contingent, the Q2. If you're new here, you might not know that I thought about purchasing this camera for a full year before finally bringing it home. You will have to pry this camera out of my cold, dead hands before I'd ever let it go. And the SL2 is our interchangeable lens Leica. We thought about this one for quite a long time too, but in general, the Leica cameras have brought us joy and they have a way of helping me reset. I use a lot of cameras on tight timetables and I have to keep my creativity high to turn out quality photography week after week. Using these cameras just helps me do that. To go along with it, the 24 to 90 millimeter f2.8 to four, like the 24 to 70 millimeter lenses that I've shown you today, this is a do it all lens. And then of course I have an 85 millimeter prime. The Sigma 85 millimeter F1.4 Art was my choice for the L mount. I also have a Sigma 45 millimeter F2.8 contemporary lens. This one looks a little bit different because it is uncoated. It is a wonderful walk around lens for just about anything. And then the last L mount lens is the Panasonic 70 to 200 F4. We purchased this used from KEH recently, and it has been our telephoto solution for the SL2. We also have some M mount lenses and adapters. The lenses are the Voigtlander 28 millimeter F2 Ultron and the Seven Artisans 50 millimeter F1.1. These manual focus lenses can be adapted with inexpensive adapters to all of the cameras that we own. Plus, we have adapters to allow us to use them on the Fuji X mount for when I borrow those. Other inexpensive adapters we have allow us to use Nikon F mount G lenses on Fuji Film X mount or our Nikon F lenses on the Leica L mount. Those mean you're using manual focus though. We do have a few interesting lens adapters that allow us to autofocus different combinations. This Megadap adapter allows us to autofocus M mount lenses on Nikon Z bodies. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> we have even added an inexpensive adapter I just mentioned to this adapter to autofocus older F mount lenses on our Z bodies. I also have here two TechArt adapters, one to autofocus Sony E lenses on Nikon Z bodies, and one to autofocus Canon EF lenses on Nikon Z bodies. 
I know, it's crazy and weird and totally fun. Back to cameras though. I have here a Fujifilm X100V and the wide angle conversion lens. This is a wonderful camera, like the Leica Q2 for walking around and capturing anything that comes your way, but it's so compact that it stays out of the way when needed. And speaking of compact, I currently have three action cameras. The GoPro Hero 8 Black, the Insta360 1R with both the Leica lens mod and the 360 degree lens mod, and the Insta360 1X2. These are good for all sorts of adventures, which you know I love, and I've used them for a vlog style video in the field too. On to drones. I adore flying these around and the footage I can achieve is unreal and I like it when I can complement a video that I'm making with that type of environmental footage. I have the Mavic 2 Pro as well as the original Mavic Pro. Raymond likes to add an action camera attachment to that one and get cool 360 degree footage in the air. And then we have a few film cameras which don't get a ton of use, but every year I say that this will be the year. The Canon AE-1 with a 28 millimeter f2.8 lens. This was my mom's setup when I was young and it's actually broken, I'd like to get it fixed. We also have the Nikon N65 and the Nikon FG. Another camera that doesn't get a ton of use these days, but boy has it been a lot of places with us, is the Canon PowerShot G7. I just can't part with it. Last, we have phones. We each just sprung for the iPhone 12 Pro Max. The cameras have gotten so great on these. I primarily use it for Instagram stories, search for Snapchat to find me there, <laughs> and really for anything that I wanna document on the odd chance that I don't have one of my many other cameras with me. Of course, I have extra batteries, memory cards, straps, microphones, various lighting, printers, <laughs> not to mention computers, storage, backups, but while all of those things are used in my photo and video work, we'll discuss them another time. <laughs> if there is something in particular that you'd like to know about, like my bags or my tripods, let me know in the comments below. So we have a lot of gear. <laughs> we certainly wouldn't have as much or as many different brands if I weren't here on YouTube, but I am fortunate that my passion is also my job and also that my partner is also passionate about photography, so I can justify this collection. Speaking of my job, I have a lot of things planned this year. Certainly more gear reviews, but I'm going to be doing some new and different things with my cameras, of course. So stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed and give this video a like if you found it interesting or entertaining or you just want to support this channel. Speaking of which, thank you again to KEH for their continued support of this channel. I love working with companies that I love. So make sure that you check out the links to KEH in the description if you are thinking about buying or selling gear. And thank you for watching.